All right, so since this is the gentleman that ordered the bottle of wine, I'm going to approach from his right. Uh, I'm going to put the glass down to his right, uh, the right of the water glass itself, and then continue around in a, a clockwise manner, uh, doing the same thing with the other guests. Thank you. You're welcome. You have two glasses here, is that Yes, sir. One is for water, and then uh, the, uh, the bigger glass will be for your wine. Oh. So once again, I'm going to approach to the right of the gentleman that ordered the bottle of wine, and I'm going to go ahead and present it to his right. So we have the Moritz and Cabernet Sauvignon from 2010, mm. and it's always a good idea to go ahead and point out the vintage to them. Uh, you're going to keep the bottle in such a way that the label is pointed at the person that ordered it. Uh, and when you open the bottle, yeah, you don't want to twist it and do all sorts of strange maneuvering because you want to continue to present uh, the label to the person. So that means that you're going to have to take your trusty wine key, uh, extend the blade, and you're going to come around and slice uh, like that underneath the lip. You don't want to cut all the way at the top. Uh, you want to cut down just below. You also don't want to take the whole uh, foil off. You just want to cut around. So a nice way to do it is to start here, press with your thumb, cut around like this, and then flip the knife and come around the back side like that. Take the knife again, make an incision up the side, and then you can just insert your knife underneath the foil and peel it right back. still the problem of the cork in the bottle there. Huh? Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our, uh, what we call the worm out from the wine key, insert it into the cork very, very straightly, straight down. If you get it uh, going sideways or diagonal, you can end up running up against the sides of the bottle and that's no good. It's take it, press the uh, first little prong against the lip of the bottle. Extend it halfway, put the second bit against the bottle, pull out the rest. Don't yank it out because it'll make a big sound. We don't want that. We want quiet uh, sort of service. And just gently ease, out it, ease it out for the, the remainder. At this point, you'll take the cork off the worm, and you're going to set it uh, to the right of the person that ordered it, like that. Now, uh, you're going to pour a small taste for that person. You're welcome. The purpose of presenting the cork is, is really sort of uh, a formality. It's uh, a matter of the person uh, inspecting it, making sure it's not soaked all the way through or damaged. Uh, uh, sometimes people smell the corks. Uh, that's not really necessary. If the, uh, the wine is tainted uh, with cork taint, they'll smell it in the wine anyway. So. Wonderful. Now I'm going to continue around the table uh, once again in a clockwise uh, manner and I'm going to first pour the ladies and pour to their right like this. Uh, we don't want to be backhanding guests like that. Uh, and then we'll continue with the uh, other guests like you, sir. Thanks. You look great tonight, sir. Thank you. I put on my best attire. It looks like you did. much larger pores than I did. We always finish with the person that ordered it. Uh, now, this is a uh, tricky thing if you've got quite a few people at a table, six or eight people. You'll have to do a little shorter pours and eyeball it so that you can be sure not to run out of wine before you get to the person that ordered it. That's a terrible mistake. Uh, and so uh, always uh, you try to gauge how much you need to, to pour in order to get everybody some wine. We're going to have 12 others joining us later. So. Oh. Is that a problem? 